Hello and welcome to another Lunar Flight video. So recently I've been playing this quite a bit and I uploaded several videos demonstrating the different types of missions from the Lost Cargo, which is my personal favorite, to the Transport Mission and the, uh, the Data Survey. And I've completed uh, all the maps uh, in the sense that I've gotten all the upgrades that I could possibly get and gone all the way to Mars and everything. So I thought what would also be interesting, perhaps, would be to just kind of start over from scratch. So that actually wasn't as intuitive as I thought it would be. I thought I would just be able to create a new profile and the new profile would be reset. But I actually found that when I created a new profile, it inherited all the, the, uh, the, the progress that I had made on the Blixel profile. So then I actually deleted the Blixel profile and recreated the Blixel profile and the, even the new profile still had saved all the progress that I made. Uh, so then I actually just searched my computer for Lunar and I found that I believe it was in the C colon backslash Lunar Flight backslash profiles or something like that. There was a directory called Blixel. So I just ax I, I moved that directory somewhere else so that I could recover it if I want to. But now the profiles directory is completely empty. So I'm assuming that now if I create a Blixel profile, it will um, have, yeah, and that's what I was looking for. So it's back to level one. Uh, when I previously did this, and again, I just deleted the Blixel profile and recreated it, it still had the account balance from the uh, progress I'd already done, and the level was all the way up and everything, and that's obviously not what I was trying to do. So anyway, with all that said, let's go ahead and hit play. And of course, we'll do single player. We'll start off of map one and let's load up map one. So we're going to start out um, and yeah, so having done what I've done, it also is putting me back into like the tutorial screen here. So let me go ahead and close that out because I am familiar enough with the game, obviously. One thing I am curious about is if it reset my controls because I did choose a custom control for uh, primarily the thrust lock and and it uh, it saved that because uh, I had a little bit of a keyboard conflict when I was using the the control to do the thrust lock. All right, so we're starting off on this on the easiest map, and you can see in the mini map over here uh, we have our Alpha Beta Charlie Delta bases and they're all in real close proximity to each other. So let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, one of the things you can do if you want. Uh, we don't have to choose a mission you can just you know let's actually demonstrate this let's just choose a different base so let's choose bravo and we're just gonna uh yeah i keep thinking you have to hit target or nav but you don't it just puts it up here so let's just fly over to bravo using the default vessel that doesn't have any upgrades of any kind and let me go ahead and use the c camera for that so we're going to hover up uh, yaw or rotate over towards the left and just go over and land on Bravo. So power up. And yeah, I can definitely tell the, the, the vessel's a lot more sluggish in the default configuration. And then we don't have any of that yaw dampening or anything. I kind of almost, kind of almost maybe think I might like it not having the yaw dampening. So it might be something I could actually turn off. So I don't want to climb too high and I don't want to move too fast because we don't have very far to go. Let me take a look at the external camera just to see what we're looking at here. So let me go ahead and pitch so that I'm upright. So this is just kind of a free flight mode you can play around with, which is, you know, definitely fun. I like games that have that element to it where you don't have to uh, follow a script or any particular pre-planned mission, you can just kind of mess around in the game environment. Games like uh, Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption 2, that kind of thing. Sometimes it's fun just to mess around. And that's kind of all I'm doing right here. Just uh, making a quick hop from the Alpha base to the Bravo base. So we're starting to head back down. Maybe put in a bit more forward velocity to get over there a bit quicker. And again, to the de the default control on the Xbox controller for uh, thrust controls is the left thumbstick, and you push forward to go forward, which I have gotten used to. Um, but it does 
feel it, intuitively, at least it feels a bit backwards to me because I feel like if I'm pushing forward, like I want to push thrust out of the front, which would actually slow me down. And if I want to go forward, I would push thrust out of the back. So I'd pull the stick backwards, but it's the other way around. I think I'm using, I think that makes sense to me because of the way the controls in Orbiter work, you know, six and nine uh, to go forward, you press six and to go backwards, you press nine on the numeric keypad. All right, so we're almost over to the landing pad. So we'll start slowing things down here. So we have our velocity, our horizontal velocity, mostly zeroed out. And now we'll just touch down gently on the pad and we're down. So that used, you know, 44% of our fuel just to make that short hop. So the default vessel is definitely uh, not the most efficient, but we don't get any money by just flying around for the fun of it. So let's take a mission. Actually, I guess maybe we did get some money just flying around for the fun of it. All right, so for the first mission, um, let's just go ahead and do a transport. We'll just take mission number one. So I'll hit accept and select the navigation. And we're just going to transport a thousand units of weight or mass worth of cargo, probably kilograms, over to Delta. Okay, so let's go to map, and it's going to be to our south and to our west. So let's uh, hover up. You can definitely feel those engines working harder. And start rotating around. Hopefully I'm not going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. Oh, well, I'll just commit to it. Rotating the long way around. And that's going to be Delta there, that big green ring. All right, pitch forward to 45 degrees or thereabout. Put in some engine thrust. We don't really want to climb. So I'll just put in a few meters a second. Again, we're only going 400 meters, so we don't want to put in a ton of forward velocity because everything we put in, we have to take back out. So we'll get the ship back to the zero position. I do kind of wish there was like a like a locking point when you got near that zero that it would just kind of understand that you're trying to level out the vessel and it would like lock into that position a little bit. It doesn't really do that. That's okay. Just kind of a thought. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and continue moving over towards the Delta base and then we'll drop off this transport cargo and maybe try one of the other easy missions. So we're already down to 735 uh, delta velocity. So there, the ship is pretty easy to navigate and maneuver but once you start getting those upgrades you can you can definitely feel the difference in the way it handles take a quick look at the external view oops All right. oops i might actually be overshooting because i was looking at the external view too long but that's okay we have the fuel to waste yeah we're overshooting the pad but just go ahead and back up here Yeah, everything is a lot slower with this vessel configuration. So you get used to flying the upgraded vessel and you know, things just don't happen as quickly with the uh, unupgraded vessel. Okay, so we're almost back over the landing pad. 
keep our V rate mostly zero and start slowing down our horizontal velocity so that we can land on the land on the target landing pad there. Okay, so we're straight up above the pad, so we'll just settle down now. Okay, there we go. Then we'll go to the cargo uh, panel and unload our cargo, see what kind of money we get for this mission. While we're doing that, we'll refuel. Okay, nope, don't save that, close. I don't know if we can get any upgrades yet, let's see. So this costs 10,000, so yeah, we can actually get our first thrust. Actually, no, we can't, it's locked. So we have the money for it, but we did pro we probably don't have the, uh, the experience quite yet. Okay, that's fine, let's go ahead and close that out. Let's actually go to items, let's go ahead and buy some fuel. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and get three fuel modules because the next one I want to try is the Lost Cargo because like I said, that's my favorite type of mission that we do. And it's going to be east of Delta, so we'll just hit accept. Go to cargo, make sure transponder's on, then I'll go to the map. So east of Delta, so that's going to be... So we're at Delta, so it's going to be somewhere over here. It might actually be up on the ridge, so we have to uh, consider that possibility as well. All right, hover up. And start rotating over. Oh, I already have a transponder beep, so the, the lost cargo must be very, very close. And again, we're taking the scenic route for our rotation. I'm just going to translate forward rather than pitching over the vessel because we've already got the beep so it must be close should be pretty easy to see oh, I see it so it's that dot right there below the 10. Got the velocity vector right over top of it now. All right, so we'll just kind of keep moving at the rate that we're currently moving at. We don't want to move too fast. I thought that the, because uh, we're, down, we're down inside this crater, and I thought that if you got outside of the crater at all, you'd be out of bounds. Uh, and one time I was doing a lost cargo on this map and the cargo was actually up on top of the crater and I couldn't find it for the life of me and then eventually I'm like well maybe you can actually go out of the crater but I, I just kept thinking to myself that the crater wall was like the boundary limit but it's not on this map you can go slightly outside of the crater wall all right let's touch down here next to the cargo and turn off the transponder and recover. And let's see where we have to take this lost cargo to. So we have to take it over to Bravo. So let's uh, go to the map and go next. Okay, so over to Bravo. All right, hover up and correct that roll. Rotate over towards Bravo. And just start translating forward. And once again, once you pick up the mass of the, the lost cargo, you can definitely feel it. I may have actually wanted to go ahead and pitch forward to move a bit faster, but 
it's fine. I did purchase those extra fuel modules, so we should have all the fuel we need to get over there with no problem. Hopefully we can make it without using them. I wonder if it's cheaper to refuel the main tank as opposed to using the fuel you brought with you or if there's no difference in cost. I've never looked into it. Okay, so we're heading towards the little landing pad there at Bravo. And I'm actually going to go ahead and translate a bit to the left because that antenna wire has me a little worried. You can hit that stuff as I've discovered playing this game. So be wary of the antenna and the surrounding wires. Alright, let's take. Should have started taking out that forward velocity sooner. Alright, I am not going to risk the fuel. So I'm just going to top back up. But in order to do that, I did have to take my hand off the throttle or off the translation. I think I would have overshot anyway, but I wouldn't have overshot by as much if I could have refueled without taking my hand off the translation. Yeah, I overshot that by a lot. back because these these RCS thrusters on this thing are just major weak sauce okay I don't want to go too fast backwards because then we'll overshoot in the other direction okay keep an eye on our distance so we know when to start removing the translation. So we're 30 meters out. And we don't want to climb. So keep an eye on the V-rate. It's about 20 meters out. Moving some forward velocity, or some backwards velocity, I should say. I am going to hit the ground. I should have rotated backwards so I could see where I was going. A bit hard to tell, like, what's going on. Let me actually rotate towards the landing pad. It'll make it a little bit more intuitive. Oh my gosh, I need more fuel. Crazy inefficient. So this was way more messy than it should have been, but we will get there eventually. Let's get a bit more altitude make sure we're not going to drag our feet on the landing pad as we get close to it, but I think we're okay. Used a lot of fuel, two fuel modules plus a full tank. That's a bit ridiculous. Alright, so we're almost over the pad. Start eliminating some of that forward velocity. And now we just need to touch down. And there we are. So let's go ahead and refuel, go to the cargo, unload, and we will have successfully completed this mission. And let's see if we have enough experience and money now for an upgrade. I think we still need a little bit more experience. Let's do the 
Yeah, we need a little bit more experience. We have 43, 49, we need 5,000. We do have the money for it. Okay, so let's just buy some more fuel. And then we will uh, pick a couple more missions in another video and then finally get our first upgrade and then kind of just get a sense for how the vessel feels after that. So that's going to wrap it up for this Lunar Flight video. Uh, please leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video.